Hi, thanks for joining me again. My name's Stephen Crane and welcome to another watercolour painting demonstration. This is uh, Sutton Park. Um, and this is, uh, first all I've done is wet the water, wet the uh, paper all over with clean water. A bit of raw sienna there on the paper. No real order to it, just put on a sort of mishmash randomly all the way down the bottom. Then I'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine. This will just be the sky area that you'll be able to see through the trees. Leaving plenty of that um, raw sienna behind to show. Just mixing the two colours together on the paper. Trying to get a little bit of variation. And then once I've got it on, I'll just soak up the little bits of water that are dripping down. Just to try and stop all the paint from rushing down the paper. Which it sometimes tends to, tends to do, because I have the paint at the, almost 90 degrees, the easel. So I'm just using the hair dryer. Yeah, just to give it a quick dry, that's just to stop the water from coming down, no other reason. Ideally I'd like to just leave it, um, it's just when I see it all coming down, I just need to take control. So here I'm just taking out a few clouds, deliberately lower down, just so that the profile of the trees along the horizon will show up better. So that was just a little bit of cloud with a bit of clean tissue. Now I'm mixing the paint, basically the same two colours, ultramarine bit of uh, raw sienna as well and these this will be the tree line now the most distant trees just using the corner of the height brush and you can see where I've just put them in there where I've took the clouds out just mixing the raw sienna and then adding a bit more of the ultramarine just to try and get a little bit of variation as I work my way along some will have a bit more raw sienna in some will have a bit more ultramarine in just so that they're not all the same colour all the way across So once they're in, I think the next thing I did, I'm just flicking up, just a, suggesting, just a, the odd little uh, tree trunk here with the with the fingernail, and then I'm going to use the number three rigger, just to flick up a few uh, distant trunks. So I'll, I'll start some of them. I'll start off light with a fingernail like that, and then just continue them. Just continuing with the, the, the rigger brush just to get so you get the contrasts. Just flicking them up on mass. But again these are these are quite far away so there's not too much detail. So everything at this distance is kept fairly light light in tone. And then what I'll do in a, in a minute, I'll uh, once I've finished flicking up the, the trees, I'll just use a, a, sort of a very, very light wash, same sort of mix, and just use the corner of the height brush just to put in the foliage. But first I'll just finish off with the, uh, with the trunks and the rigger brush. I'm also trying to sort of randomly space them out. I don't want them all clumped together or sort of neatly lined up. I want them sort of naturally random. Sometimes I fall into the habit of just putting everything equally spaced. So it just looks a bit naff. So this is just a little bit of a little bit of light tone just to suggest all those uh, foliage all, all painted on mass in one big clump. But you can see just keeping it light in tone because this is the distant trees. I'll save all the strong tones for the foreground. And then the, the sort of contrast between the tones really helps with the depth. So I think next it's the uh, just moving down into the middle ground now. So these are the this is the area where we've got a bit of raw sienna I'll put in first. Then I've got a bit of burnt umber now, brushing just below that. Then I'm taking a bit of uh, ultramarine, just going straight into the ultramarine, that, and then that helps you get the uh, the darker tones. And this, these will look a bit sort of shadowy when the painting's finished. And then once once, uh, 
once you want to go back to the light tones now you'll need to clean your brush so this is just lemon yellow now these are the grass areas coming down into the foreground mixing some lemon yellow a bit of uh, raw sienna in there as well just for a bit of variation then it's back to the raw sienna just just working my way around the path that's going to sort of snake its way down into the foreground again adding a bit of ultramarine there just to darken some of the, the grassy areas so now I'm adding the path so this was just a little bit of so I cleaned the brush and it was a bit of light red uh, ultramarine just putting it down the minimum of strokes then I've cleaned the brush now I just want to move the grass up to the path area so a bit more lemon yellow a bit of raw sienna and just push push it up to the edge of the paths coming right down into the foreground and then that's a sort of basic so there's your sort of background so what I want to do in front of that is then add some really strong trees to contrast so all I'm doing here just adding a few little darker bits of grasses just a bit of burnt umbra and ultramarine now I just want to make sure that the the, uh, the pipe is flat against the easel before I continue anymore So because I want these um, foreground trees to be really strong, I want the paper to be dry. That way you can get the paint on with sort of maximum intensity. You know, the, 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 the strength's not getting diluted by the water that's already on the paper, if you see what I mean. So that's the idea be, be behind drying the uh, paper. So once I'm happy that that's fairly dry, doesn't have to be bone dry, just, just drier than it was. So now I'm going to start working on the uh, these trees now. So I, re I always used to put these in with a hike, but I found they look a lot natural now. If uh, you put them in with a rigger brush, and then it's the, it's the secret, it's all in the way you sort of flick the brush up as you, as you go up. Because that way you get more paint coming off the brush. If you just do it all in one smooth stroke, you, you hardly get any sort of paint coming off. So if you're just sort of sort of flicking it as you as on the stroke on the big the big the trunk on the way up, it really helps. And then it's just a case of just flicking all the. But only once once you've got most of the paint off the brush by putting in the trunk, you can then go a bit mad then going left and right putting in all the twigs and the branches. And because there's only a little bit of paint on the brush, you know. It's not going to go on too strong, and it's, you're not going to make too much of a mess. Just faint little twigs and things. Again, it's another big, big chunk. So I reloaded the brush, pressed down to get a broader stroke, and then flicking in all those little twigs and branches coming off the sides, pressing down near the base just to get that broad base of the trunk grounded. So obviously you don't want thin thin base and then give it up to a thicker trunk it just looks a bit silly again another big big trunk going up this one's even dark you see i've added a bit more ultramarine to that one to get an even darker mix and then once i've got the main trunk in then i can start working on the branches So you can see how it just all helps building up, build your painting up. You can see how this trunk, these two trees are just slightly closer than the, the two behind. And putting a bit th thicker, stronger mix as well. And it's all about creating that depth. You can see these, the strength of these tones now going right back to the distant trees on the horizon. You can see how it helps create that, the illusion of, of space and distance. <coughs> Now for the big one in the foreground, so lots of paint, lots of water as well, and then just press down as you're sort of flicking the height brush up, just to get the trunk in. Press down at the base as well, just to get a nice thick base where the tree's grounded amongst all the grass. 
then I can start working again on all the, the branches and the twigs. So they're the uh, the trees on the left. Now I'm going to start working on the uh, the right ones. So you can see those 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 trunks now. See how they contrast lovely against those distant trees on the horizon. So just just going over some of the areas that I've just just uh, done just to get the the thicker thicker strokes and then I can start again coming out sideways flicking out with the brush so and then so just to the right of this one now we've got another big tree so again lots of paint lots of water and just work work it right up right at the top right off the top of the page again just keep reloading the brush as necessary adding all those twigs and branches and uh, and then a few flicks a few more grasses and things growing near the trees a few more on the left hand side just sort of spaced out nice and random another big uh, branch coming off to the right And just finishing off those twigs and branches. So this is just a few a little, just something little growing next to the the trees there. Just a bit of variation. A few little things growing next to the woods. So now I'm just, um, this is just a bit of raw sienna, a little bit of burnt umber, and these are just some darker grasses, just at the base, just to ground all the trees, make them look anchored to the ground. Just a few little dark tones scattered here and there. Um, and these will double up as, as shadows as well once I start putting the shadows in so once I've sort of grounded the trees then it's time to put the shadows in and then for, I mean for shadows I generally use there's no exact science to it not when I, not when I do it anyway I generally use um, light red a bit of burnt umber and a bit of ultramarine just mix those three together plenty of water because I don't want them to I don't want to be too dark it'll take a bit of practice um, shadows because obviously you want to be able to see the the ground underneath but you want them to be dark enough so that you can see them from a distance as you look at the painting you know once it's in its frame just so that it sort of really sort of punches punches out uh, yeah so it takes a bit of practice shadows. I mean, I'm still learning myself. You know, you never stop learning. None of us ever stop learning. We're all learning off one another. We learn something new from each paint to take forward to the next. So I'm just going to mix up a, a shadow mixer, the three colours I just mentioned. And then I'll try, I'll try and get enough enough paint on the brush so I can get most of them in in one go so I'm going to keep reloading the brush so 
So I'm just working out where the light source is coming from and then remember they don't come in a straight line, they sort of follow the contours of the land so they're sort of going up and down, up and down over the beats and bumps. Working. See now that's why I kept, I kept the, the path deliberately light just so the shadows would stand out. I'm also darkening some of the trunks. And then a few shadows cast from some things on the left, just out of shot. And then just little dibs and dabs. Try not to overdo it. Always restraints is always the order of the day. Just darkening some of the trunks there. Just to complete the effect. Just trying to sort of silhouette them against the light. And then once it's all in, just get the air dryer. Get them all dry. And at this point the uh, the painting's not a, not a million miles off completed. Just a few little details to add here and there. Before we can stick the uh, the mains on it. So like I say, this is uh, this this one is a step by step guide in my my new book. Um, I'll try and put the reference photo as in there as well. I'm hopefully I'm trying to get the book out before uh, Christmas, although I'm getting pretty close. Slowly, quickly running out of time, but uh, I'll, I'll see how I get on anyway. I'll make a, an update video in the next few days. Hopefully, I'll, I'll be there or there or thereabouts. So now I'm just I've just switched to the number three rigger. Just took some of that dark mix off the uh, off the palette, and I'm just putting a little man. And then next to him, I'll just put a little dog. So these just act as a focal point. Um, also gives a, a sense of scale to the to the scene as well. And then they'll obviously need their little shadows as well. Make sure they're going in the same directions as the ones from the trees. That's so often with these uh, my reference photos that it's, they often tend to be quite a dull day, so I have to make the shadows up. So I'm just adding the little bird up in the sky, and then I think all that's left to do now is put my name in the corner, and this one's uh, pretty much complete. So all that's left to do now is mount it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.